this is about why I thought someone was really in love with me. And I used to think it's because I thought less of myself, but it's not. When I fell for someone in particular, and I honestly thought there was more there is because I did think more of myself. It's not because I thought less of myself. Because why would anyone treat me badly? Why would somebody that I finally gave myself to start ignoring me? Why would someone be so disrespectful to me when I respected myself enough to wait till I thought this person was worthy of me. So why did I think less of myself? I didn't think less. I thought more of myself because I said, this person wouldn't do this to me because this person is an A1 kind of guy. He's a good guy. So I didn't think anything of this. I thought this guy was a really great guy. So my only mistake was ignoring the signs because I said, no way. I kept thinking this guy was the guy because I thought he was a good guy and because I thought more of myself, not less of myself. The only part where it started to go awry and where it started to go, hmm, is when I didn't listen to my hmm. And I started to say, hmm, he's not texting back when he should be, if I respected myself. He's not calling me back or emailing me back as often anymore. He's not responding. He's not responding first. He's not texting me first like a gentleman would do. He's not as interested anymore. When the challenge is over for a man and he finally gets you, And now it's over because the challenge is over. If he really wants you as something more special than just a few nights of sex, he's going to be there. Let me just tell you something. Although I thought, well, he gave me a lot of great excuses and he really, you know, was a busy person. So I thought to myself, well, no, I still respect myself to, to think that this guy is still a great guy. You know what I mean? I really thought, this guy's really good. He's a good man. Because he was really sweet and kind. And, and he spoke softly and, and, and well of his family. And, and he was so, I don't know. Uh, he was not harsh. He wasn't like cussing and he wasn't, um, I don't know, he was a family person. He really loved his parents and his family meant everything to him. And he wasn't disrespectful in my presence. Um, He was very kind and soft-spoken and and, and like a gentleman, to tell you the truth. However, I didn't really know him. I really didn't know him. Because I didn't know him for years. I didn't really... I only saw what I wanted to see. And I only paid attention to the things that I wanted to pay attention to. Because those are the things that made me feel good. Those are the things that I wanted to see in a man. The part where he started ignoring me. The part where it would have been a real relationship a very healthy relationship. Uh, I looked past all that and only saw the things that looked like a relationship. I started romanticizing everything. So much that it became very unhealthy. It became... Now it became an entity uh, all... It became... I don't know what the word is, but all-consuming. Because then it, it took on a life of its own. Because then I started making excuses for him, even before he made it themselves. But then he started lying. 
Um, and then, uh, and then I started lying to myself because I was still, now I started disrespecting myself because now I started lying to myself because everybody around me was saying, oh, <laughs> uh, you're not see-. my mother, everybody, all my friends, they said they got sick of hearing his name. They got sick of me saying, no, 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 this is the guy. Because when I first saw him, I said, this is the man I'm going to marry. And listen, he's, he, he's still a good guy. He just didn't want me. He just wanted me when it was convenient for him. He wasn't a bad man. But he did play a lot of games. And I'm sure he played it with me and a few others. However, I thought I was the only one he was playing with. Because for me... I was ignoring some major signs. And then it got to the point years were going by. And I only saw him. Meaning I only saw him in my mind as somebody that I couldn't let go of. And then he would start saying things like... After he would dangle the carrot by saying a a few of the right things to me... For me to think it meant something more than it really did. That it ever did. It never meant anything than I thought it would. The first sign to me is always this. I never met his family. Never. I always wondered. Because I always wanted to meet. I've always met anyone that I've dated. Their their family. Because they thought I was pretty special. So I would definitely meet parents. No matter what, I would be invited to Thanksgivings and, and, and holidays because I, I meant a lot to these uh, uh, men that I have dated, the ones that were long relationships. I was at every holiday, no matter where they lived. So that should have been a big sign because I would always mention I'd love to meet your family. And one of the times he actually kind of laughed. Like, I should have said to myself, he chuckled and they were even one time in my neighborhood and he would ask he asked the question hey do you know of any good restaurants over there where you live and I said oh oh and they're not they're not from here so I said oh gosh I know with this one and this one I go oh (laughs) thinking he was going to ask me to join them and um I think he chuckled again like like I was like I was being ridiculous. And again, I would make excuses and I was already completely involved and my heart was already so involved with being in love that none of that even mattered anymore. Like it didn't even matter that, you know, that he wasn't in love with me because somewhere, somehow, and a lot of us make this huge error and life consuming and time consuming and brain consuming and heart consuming and time which is something so special and so everything in your life because that's all you have I thought he'd come around how many how many of us have done that I thought he would come around and they uh, don't They don't come around. And I've heard maybe two stories in my life where they do come around. Um, And and, and it's very rare. Because usually they know. And it's so sad because you know, but he doesn't or she doesn't. Isn't that sad? Like, you really... You really, you know he's the guy. And he knows you're not the girl. You know, he said things to me and and one of them was just like, I mean, I thought I was going to actually not die, but definitely my stomach was underneath my feet. He said to me, You know, someday when I'm wherever I'm going, and I'm not going to mention all that, I'm going to meet a girl. And 
want to settle down and, you know, get married or maybe have children. Now, are you going to be able to handle that? What? And I said, what do you mean? Like, and I just said, he goes, what are you? And what are you in love with me? Like, this is what he says to me. He goes, what are you in love? And the face on him when he said to me, what are you in love with me or something? The face he made, like I was disgusting. Like I was out of my mind. And I'd been in love with him already, probably, I don't know, seven years. <laughs> he makes a face like that at me with that tone. Telling me about another girl, some girl, whoever she he didn't even have a girl in mind. And that's how much he was not in love with me. And still to this day, which now it has been 16 years, I now finally get to the point only because I know he's in love. And she's beautiful. And she's everything. And not everything that I'm not, but everything that he loves. And, you know, all the things I fantasized or romanticized about being with him or being the girl, I'm not. And she is. And it is such a hard pill to swallow, not only because it's everything you wanted. He's, he's the guy, right? He's, he's not the guy. And, and I've missed out on so much on who the guy could have been because I was so busy romanticizing the guy that never was. And I sat there, and not only that, but working with them or th- these people as, as not only that, that was destroyed. So a whole life that I romanticized turned into nothing. Like, I was nothing. I became nothing. And in that life that I created and I romanticized, and because I missed out on all this love that I needed as a child, I went after things that never were. Just as a child, I craved these things that were not there. Now, the moral of that story is you just because you don't get it from one person doesn't mean you go out and try to get it from all the other people that don't want to give it to you either. You can't go out and try to find it from people that are never going to give it to you because it's never going to happen. And there goes your life. Loveless life. And people that will use you. And people that, and I'm not saying that this is what happened here, but however, you will destroy your own life that way. It's not necessarily their, their fault. It's, it's you're doing it. You are setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for expectations that are not realistic. They will never, ever happen because you're going for Not that they're out of your league. That is not true at all. But you're going for people that don't want you. You almost are like a magnet. And they, you're a magnet for those kind of people. It's weird. It's a weird thing because they know you're weak. And they know exactly how to treat weak people. People that are easily manipulated easily. You can be a marionette. They can be a marionette with you. They can do anything with you. They know exactly how to play until you get strong and until you wake up, until you stand up. Then they don't know what to do with you anymore. And then you're a different person. And then you don't play the game or you don't play their game. And then you have your own game. So if you start that from the beginning, you would never be in this position. And if you wake up and say, wait a minute, this guy's not for me because I'm going after something that does not exist, then 
something changes. Your whole life goes on a different track. And then your whole dynamic in your life changes. Your, your success changes. Your, the people you attract change. The things you do in your life change. Everything that you do in your life will change. Every decision you make changes. Because you made that one decision, which goes back to the whole... You know, the premise of my book is every decision you make has a reward and a consequence. And what I'm saying to you is if you make that decision to say, you know what, just because it happened to me when I was little doesn't mean it has to happen now. If you really figure out why you make certain decisions that come out and they become disastrous, then you won't make them again. Because what's the definition of insanity? I know everyone says it, but really, if you apply it to your life, a lot of things will change. You know, there's nothing wrong with admitting that things have happened to your life and happened in your life that have screwed you up. But there is something to be said about knowing that they happen in your life and changing it. And you know what? Had I done that, I would have saved myself a lot of time, a lot of heartache, a lot of why, why not me, a lot of thinking, what's wrong with me? When thinking, hey, what's right with me? So many things are right with me. I know what's right with me. There's nothing wrong with me. The only thing is wrong is that I didn't see what was right with me. That's, that's what's wrong with me. I never saw how special I was. It was all about confidence. It was all about self-esteem. It was all about going and, and hanging out with the wrong people because I didn't see all the things that were right with me. I let people take me down because I couldn't stand up. And you know what? That's what I want to bring to people that start those, making those kind of decisions because it changes the course of your life. It will change the course of your life. I will not blame anybody else when I go after people that don't really belong in my circle. They, there's nothing wrong with those people. It's me trying to hang on to something that's really not wanting me to be in their circle. It's, it's just, it's nice to have me around, but they don't need me. And I don't need them. What I need is me. And I, <laughs> I'm pretty spectacular. And I, I love to bring people up and lift people up. That's who I am. I'm going to sneeze and I know I shouldn't be, oh, maybe, maybe I'll go away. Hold on. Hang on. <sighs> now, I'm not just saying one person. I'm not just saying one person. I've done this with a lot of people. I go after people. No, I, in the past. That don't want me as much as I need them to love me or accept me. I am not that person. Not anymore for a long time now. I know who I am and I know what I'm worth and I know, gosh, what I bring to the table. My brilliance is beyond words. My focus has always been lacking. Everybody's told me that because I, I, I have so much. Now, it's because I, I know my greatness. Do you understand? I know my greatness. But because a lack of focus has stopped me from a lot of things and because I spent so much time uh, needing, needing to fill the void I, I didn't have, filled when I was a kid. And, 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 it, and I never fixed it. So a lot of people, when they have that kind of thing missing, they go out and they spend too much time trying to fill the void with the wrong stuff. And that's, that's simple because a lot of people have addiction and they fill it with alcohol and drugs and some kind of things that, you know, are very negative. And in my thing was I was trying to fill it with people to try to make them love me or whatever or accept me in through their families because I didn't really have the family thing. So I wanted to be part of a family and, and be part of that love of a family. 
And and I did that, in, you know, with people that, you know, I had a lot of great families around me. Don't get me wrong. My friends and their families. And maybe sometimes I didn't fit in with certain families. But I wanted to so badly. And I think the more they didn't really try to make me fit in, I think the more I tried. Because that's what I did with my own. And I think that, you know, you shouldn't have to try doing that with any one, anywhere. Because you shouldn't have to do it with your own. And I think I tried, kept doing that. And I think that was my, my deal. No one else's. I don't blame anyone else. I don't blame someone for not loving me. I don't blame someone for not loving me. I don't blame someone because I love them and they don't love me back. Come on. That's not right. You can't make someone love you. And you can't make someone try to be in their family. That's insane. So I am accountable for all of my actions. I just want to help other people that have that, that thing, that need to be accepted. You got to accept yourself and you got to be there for yourself. And you got to be so full of confidence that you stand up and you are just so full of light and happiness because you are here and you are breathing and you are so full of you that you just can't even, you're a beam of light wherever you go. And you know what? If someone does, is not into you and not, you know, and they're not giving you the signs of all that, then you know what? It's okay. Move on. Life is way too short. Move on. Keep going. Move forward. Because you've got so much to give and you bring so much to the table. You got to move forward. That's what it's all about. You need to move forward. I am so, God, I'm so sure of all of these things. I have no doubts about any of these things. I hope, I wish I was talking on camera. I guess I should have. But I hope that what I'm saying right now brings light and brings value to someone's life. I really do. I'm so happy that I learned and that I did love. And even if someone didn't love me back, I'm happy that I, I have loved, you know, and I still love. So I'm here for you guys. I'm Alexis Vandergag. You're not alone. And I'm here to lift you up, man. You do not have to look for love in all the wrong places. I know. I just said that, right? So, uh, Alexis Vandergag. That's it. I got more. Okay.